I hear your voice? I said, Praise the Lord. Tonight is my night, a night of blessing, a night of outpouring. Special night for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for our revival session. Thank you for everyone, members, leaders, workers, invitees. We know that today you're not going to miss out on anyone in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that to shake everything shakeable. Amen. Touch every life. Amen. Turn us around. Lord, show us yourself in manifold ways in Jesus' name. Blessing upon blessing. Signs and wonders upon your people. And those desires we have in our hearts. Tonight we pray you meet up with them in Jesus' name. Joy where there has been sadness. Laughter where there has been weeping. Miracle where there has been misery. And we know that today, every life will experience it in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are blessed already. You can sit down. We're coming to 1 Kings chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 18. Reading from verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. I will send rain upon the earth. I'm sure you know the story. There have been famine in the land. And they have been drought in the land, need in the land. You think about poverty, it was in the land. And you think about hunger, it was in the land. And you think about all the needs of their lives, living from hand to mouth, it was there. But now God said that famine will be over. The hunger will be over. The poverty will be over. And tonight can be a turning point in your life. Can be a turning point in your family. And something marvelously great will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to verse 45 of that same chapter. Verse 1, it says, I will send rain. And in that chapter, the chapter did not end without the rain coming. And tonight, the meeting will not end without your blessing coming. Without your miracle coming. Look at verse 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was somebody there tell me. What are you expecting tonight? And there was a great rain, a great miracle. A great manifestation, a great blessing, a great outpouring upon every life and every family in Jesus' name. It came to pass, it has come to pass tonight. In the meanwhile, at that very time, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. Tonight, we're looking at the message the remarkable manifestation of divine favor. The remarkable manifestation of divine favor. What God wants to show you tonight is favor from heaven. Amen. What he wants to implant in your life tonight is favor from heaven. Amen. And the abundance that is going to come upon your life tonight is favor from heaven. Somebody there is receiving already. Amen. It will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 33, and we're looking at verse 23. The remarkable manifestation of divine favor. It says, and of Naphtali, it said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor. Can you put your name there? 
satisfied with favor. I said, can you put your name there? Because, you know, Naphtali is not here now, and you are the person here tonight. And the Lord is smiling upon your life, and favor is coming upon your life, and it says, you will be satisfied with favor. It says, full with the blessings of the Lord. You are going to be full of the blessings of the Lord tonight. Possess thou the west and the south. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Families here tonight, be blessed with children. You have been married and you are looking for the fruit of the womb tonight. Be blessed with miracle children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. You'll be acceptable. In your place of work, you'll be acceptable. In your market, you'll be acceptable. And the work of your hand will move on and prosper in Jesus' name. Let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. You know, the people who do not have the Lord, the people who do not know the Lord, as their days, so is their weakness. The older they get, the weaker they become. And then they cannot have strength for end time ministry and end time work. But can I see you there? I said, can I see you there? You will be different. Because thy shoes shall be iron in thy feet. And brass upon thy feet. You'll tread on serpents and scorpions. All the powers of the enemies will be under your feet. And as thy days, so shall be thy strength. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Who rideth upon the heaven in thy help. And in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge. Underneath thee at the everlasting arms. And he shall throw out the enemy from before thee. And shall say destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety. Brother, you will dwell in safety. Sister, you will dwell in safety. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou. Tears are wiped away. Happy art thou. Sorrow is gone. Happy art thou, your mystery is forgotten. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. All their threats lie. All their boasting lies. And anyone that tells you, I will finish you. And they say, all those problems are coming. You can go anywhere. Go to higher life and go to deeper life and go to further life. That problem will remain there. It's a lie. Your enemy shall be found liars unto you tonight. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Look at some look at some some five. I'm looking at some five. I was looking at verse twelve. Some five. I was looking at verse twelve. You are blessed tonight. Things are turned around tonight in your life. Look at verse twelve. For thou, O Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor. With what? What's coming upon your life tonight? What's going with you to your place of work tomorrow? I was going to be your community. Upon your children going to school. Upon your wife going to market. Upon your relatives that come to visit you. Upon anyone that takes shelter in your house. And then tonight at the time of prayer. 
I said tonight at the time of prayer. What's coming upon your life tonight? Favor. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. The shield of the Lord that will protect and preserve your life. He'll cover you with favor tonight in Jesus' name. The remarkable manifestation of divine favor. We're coming back to First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. There are three points we're looking at. Number one, the promise from the Almighty. The promise from the Almighty. Point number two, the preparation for abundance. Abundance is coming. So, financial abundance, material abundance, professional abundance, joy upon joy, goodness upon goodness, the abundance of the Lord. Point number two, the preparation for abundance. Point number three, the prayer with assurance. The prayer we pray tonight, there's no prayer of doubt. There's no prayer of unbelief. I was waiting for an amen from that corner. There's no prayer of maybe or maybe not. Tonight, there's going to be a confirmation. Your life, a confirmation. Because it's going to be the prayer with... Tell me, tell me. The prayer with assurance you will see in your life. You will sense in your body something tangible will happen to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, tell me number one there. The promise from the Almighty. We're coming back to First Kings chapter 18 verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. You know, anytime the word of the Lord came to Elijah, he knew that there was going to be a performance. And you must have the same mind. You must have the same attitude. You must have the same faith. You must have the same expectation. As the word of God is coming to you, there's going to be a manifestation tonight. There's going to be a performance tonight. It says the word of the Lord is not, it, this one supersedes every other word you have heard. Every other word Ahab might have spoken. Every other word the Baal worshippers might have spoken. Every other word that man's grace might have spoken. Every other word idolaters might have spoken. This word of the Lord supersedes everything. Every other word you have in your life. Every other word you have heard somebody saying, this one is going to be preeminent. And this one is going to overshadow. It's going to overwhelm. It's going to swallow up. It's going to throw away every other word you heard in your life in Jesus' name. It says, saying, go show thyself unto Ahab. Show thyself unto Ahab. Let me stop there for a moment. Anytime a prophet comes before you and shows up before you, something will happen. Everywhere Elijah went, show thyself. Anywhere you went, have you noticed? He showed up at the brook. And then the ravens came and they brought food and showed up in the house of that in the house of that a widow that was gathering sick so that I will eat this and die. Anywhere he showed up, miracle showed up. And now show yourself to Ahab, the king of the land and the king of the nation. And now a miracle for the whole of Israel. A miracle for the whole of your family. And here is the promise of the Lord. I will send rain upon the earth. Unconditional. This one will be fulfilled. This one will happen. In your house, you are going to see the refreshing of that rain. In your life, you'll see the refreshing of that rain. Because it says, I will send rain upon the earth the drought will be over the dryness will be over the discouragement will be over the scarcity and not having anything it will be over wherever that job is coming from it must come 
wherever that supply is coming from it must come you believe it you are going to see the glory of god remember 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 it's the word and it's the promise from the almighty i'm looking at numbers chapter 23 numbers chapter 23 and i'm reading from verse 19 it says god is not a man the god who told elijah go show yourself unto ahab because i'm going to bring rain unto the land is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent he doesn't change his mind if he says he'll save you he'll not change his mind if he says he will heal you he'll not change his mind if he says he will supply all your need he will not change his mind if he says he's going to wipe your tears away he will not change his mind if he says refreshing and favor is coming upon your life tonight he will not change his mind it will be done i said it will be done because god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent as he said and shall he not do it as he said and shall he not do it or as he spoke in and shall he not make it good the word of god will be made good in your life today Amen. fulfilled Amen. performed Amen. done Amen. is coming upon your life Amen. psalm 105 and verse 42 psalm 105 reading from verse 42 for he remembered his holy promise and abraham his servant he remembered his holy promise you see when a word comes out of the mouth of god is the holy word is a holy promise is a holy prophecy is a holy declaration and when it is holy you cannot take anything away from that it's coming from the mouth of the almighty and then it says he remembered abraham his servant and you must remember that now he remembers jesus his son i said remember jesus his son when jesus said on the cross of calvary it is finished God must always remember that. And God will always remember that. Your sorrow finished. Penalty finished. Condemnation finished. All the load upon your life, everything finished. Because it is the holy promise of the Lord. And he must and he will always remember Jesus Christ is only begotten son. Look at verse 43 there in verse 43 and he brought forth his people with joy and he's bringing you out tonight with joy and he's chosen with gladness he gave them the lands of the heathen and they inherited the labor of the people that they might observe his statutes he prepares us for obedience he, pre he, pre he prepares us for obeying the statutes of the Lord and keep his laws. Somebody there, tell me the last line. Tell me what you are going to say after the prayer tonight. Tell me what's going to happen in the bus, in the car while you are going back tonight. Tell me tonight before you sleep what will come out of your heart. You will praise the Lord, you will praise the Lord, you will praise the Lord because abundance is coming upon your life. The promises of God are coming upon your life tonight. We're coming back now, coming back now to First Kings chapter 18, point number two now. The preparation for abundance. The preparation for abundance. I want you to look at uh, chapter 18 of First Kings. I'm reading from verse 2. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. Look at that. Look at that. That's the preparation. Because the Lord had said, Go, show thyself unto Ahab. There had not been rain for these three and a half years. And God said, I'm bringing rain. And he says, Now go and show yourself unto Ahab. There was no doubt in his mind. What if I get to Ahab? 
and make the announcement and then nothing happens, of course something must happen. I said something must happen. What if we pray and then we say, God is going to do it. What if nothing happens? Don't talk about that. Something is going to happen. In your life, something is going to happen. A miracle is coming, something is going to happen. And so it says, uh, Elijah went and is to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a soft farming in Samaria, verse 3, and Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave, and he fed them with bread and water. Thank God for a person like Obadiah. And thank God for a person like you. That where you are walking, if they are opposed to God, opposed to the people of God, you will single yourself out. While Jezebel was killing uh, those prophets, Obadiah gathered those ones he could find together and hid them in a cave and was feeding them morning and evening. Look at verse 6. And, and Ahab said to Obadiah, Go into the land unto all the fountains of water and unto all the brooks by adventure we may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive that we lose not all the coast so they divided the land between them uh, to pass uh, throughout it and Ahab went one way by himself and Obadiah went another way by himself and as Obadiah was in the way behold Elijah met him Elijah met him Elijah met him the prophet will meet you he'll meet you with a message and when the message comes to you, it will take effect in your life in Jesus' name. And he knew him, and he fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Look up here, look up here. Behold, Elijah is here. Uh, you know, he could have been afraid because, you know, three and a half years now, there have been no rain. And even the king left the throne and they were searching for water, even for the animals. And he said, I'll go there and then you better go the other way. But Elijah was not afraid. He said, go tell your master, Elijah is here. I pray that the spirit of Elijah will come upon you. The boldness of Elijah will come upon you. The courage of Elijah will come upon you. You'll not be walking with your heads down. What's the matter with you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I say greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Stand up straight. And then square your shoulders. And look at Obadiah. And announce, I'm going to see Ahab today. And when you see Ahab, miracle will happen. Yeah. And then look at verse 9, and he said, What have I seen? That thou wouldest de deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord, that he is Ahab, has not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there. Well, to start with, Elijah was around somewhere. He was at the brook. There wasn't any kind of castle there. There wasn't any coffin there. He was right in the open there. And yet, Ahab searching for him with all the people he could send to search. They never discovered where Elijah was. They will not discover where you are. They not see your house. They will not see you to hurt you. Your life is secured in the hand of the Almighty God. 
and then he came to the house of um, to the house of the widow and over there there wasn't here that woman was just a widow woman and there wasn't mighty great security there and there were nobody got there for him and yet ahab never saw him how do you think that those people will ever see you i said how do you think those people will ever see you your life is secured your family is secured your business secured they will not bring you down i said they will not bring you down and when they said he's not there he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not and now thou sayest go tell thy lord behold elijah is here look at verse 12 and it shall come to pass as soon as i am gone from thee that the spirit of the lord shall carry thee whither i know not look at this elijah did not know this himself that he will not die that the spirit of the lord will come and take him like a preview of the rapture and take him away elijah did not even know that and somebody called obadiah already prophesied on your life your enemies will prophesy the people you think well he doesn't like me is working with king ahab is working with this and working with that they cannot say anything negative about you any negative thing they said all that one will go down the drain but then there's going to be a mighty prophecy coming from their mouth it will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name and then he said so when i come and tell ahab and he cannot find thee he shall slay me for and thy servant but thy servant fear the lord from my youth and then he began to tell elijah how he feared the lord but look at verse 15 and elijah said as the lord of hosts liveth before whom i stand i will surely show myself unto him when today today are you ready for today i said are you ready for today something must happen today so obadiah went to meet ahab and told him ahab and ahab went to meet elijah and it came to pass when ahab saw elijah that ahab said unto him are thou he that troubles israel well come to verse 21 and in verse 21 and elijah came unto all the people you know what had happened Elijah said, don't say that. You are the one troubling Israel, but go and gather. He gave him a command. He gave Ahab the king. He gave him a command. Go and gather all the people together. And Ahab now ran errands for Elijah. They will run errands for you. I said they will run errands for you. Get ready. The word of authority will come out of your mouth. The word of power will come from your mouth. And then Elijah came to all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You know what Elijah was telling them? Was telling them, you say that you serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And here you are, you're serving Baal. How are you halting between two opinions? One side, you go to God. The other side, you go to Baal. He was telling them what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve 
God and mammon. That's the message he was giving them. And that's the message we still have today. We cannot serve God and mammon. We decide for Christ wholeheartedly and fully, entirely today in Jesus' name. We will not be halting between two opinions. We're waiting for a reign of miracles, a reign of power, a reign of refreshing, a reign of revival. And that reign is about to fall now. I said that train is about to fall now. Amen. Point number three, the prayer with assurance. The prayer with assurance. We're coming to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He had not even prayed for the rain yet, but he had assurance. We have not even started prayer yet, but you have assurance. Assurance, there's a performance tonight. Assurance, there's a miracle tonight. Assurance that the abundance is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 42. Let me come back to that verse 41. Elijah said unto Elisha, Get thee up, tell me. Get thee up, say it aloud. Eat and drink, for there is a, a sound of abundance of rain. Look at verse 42. And Ahab went up, tell me. And Ahab went up, tell me out aloud. He believed, he believed. He said, this Elijah. I thought it was my enemy. You are not my enemy anymore. Tell me anything to do, I will do. Because he saw the power. That man prayed and fire came from heaven. And now he's telling us that rain is going to come. He believed. Ahab will not have greater faith than you have. Ahab will not have greater understanding of the miracle working power than you have in Jesus name look at Ahab taking in the word accepting the word and knowing it was going to be done and so Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees was actually praying that was his posture and said unto his servant go up now and look toward the sea and he went that's the servant and he looked and said tell me tonight is there going to be anything are you going to be like this servant he said there is nothing and he said go again you must see something. I said you must see something. Uh, the promises of God are yes and amen. You must see something. God is still the same. He has not changed. You must see something. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You must see something. Your conscience is telling you, your heart is telling you something is going to happen. You must see something. The windows of heaven are opened unto you. You must see something. The God who cannot lie and the God who said, go show yourself unto Ahab and bring in abundance of rain. He has not lied. He is going to do it. You must see something. And he said, go again. Second time, third time, fourth time. Elijah kept on saying, I have prayed. You must see something. We are praying tonight and you must see something. I will see. What are you? I will see. I said, What are you? I will see. Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. A little cloud. But you know, we're waiting for abundance, abundance of rain. And he saw a little cloud. That's just the beginning. That thing will expand. That thing will multiply. That thing will grow. He said, I see it and it's like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, 
prepare thy chariot and go and get thee down that the rain stop thee not and it came to pass in my life and it came to pass in your life tonight and it came to pass in your family tonight and it came to pass on that uh, child in the hospital tonight and it came to pass on that neighbor you are concerned about tonight and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was and there was and there was a great rain james chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 17 james chapter 5 reading from verse 17 elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and he prayed again and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit we're praying tonight and the heavens will give rain luke chapter 18 luke chapter 18 verse 7 and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he be along with them i tell you that he will avenge them speedily tonight speedily tonight speedily now isaiah chapter 65 isaiah chapter 65 and we're reading from verse 24 isaiah chapter 65 we're reading from verse uh, from verse 24 and it shall come to pass and it shall come to pass tonight tonight and it shall come to pass in your life today and it shall come to pass that before the call i will answer and while they are yet speaking i will hear favor tonight abundance tonight miracles tonight signs and wonders tonight and uh, the remarkable manifestation of the power of god in your life tonight in jesus name this is the moment now it shall come to pass that before they call i will answer and while they are yet speaking i will hear it shall come to pass somebody there it shall come to pass say it say it that before i call he will answer and while i am yet speaking he will hear again and it shall come to pass that before i call he will answer and while I am yet speaking, he will hear. Say it now yourself. Verse 24. One, two, three, go. And somebody said, Amen. Rise up and have a confirmation tonight. Rise up and have a confirmation tonight. Because it will happen. It will happen. It shall come to pass. Say something. Move that mountain. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that problem. It has come to pass. It has come to pass. And tonight is that night. Tonight is the night of remarkable manifestation of divine favor upon your life. Upon your life. Upon your life. You came here for something. You'll get more than you came for. For. you'll get more than you came for you'll get more than you came for power miracle anointing authority is there tonight while you're yet speaking while you're yet speaking while you're yet speaking he will hear he will hear he will hear and while even before you talk and before you open your mouth answer is coming from heaven 
Answer is coming from heaven. Answer is coming from heaven. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Don't halt between two opinions. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. Is the eternal one. Is the mighty one. Is the omnipotent one. Is the one that cannot fail. As he said, I shall he not do it. As he spoke, I shall he not bring it to pass. Is this not the day of your miracle? Is this not the day of your power? Is this not the day of remarkable manifestation? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. It is. It's the day of the supernatural. It's the day of great power. It's the great day of great outpouring. The famine will vanish away. The drought will vanish away. The scarcity will vanish away. The poverty will vanish away. It's a day of abundance. It's a day of a mighty rain. It's a day of a great rain. A day of miracle. A day of power. A day of anointing. Anointing that breaks every yoke. While you are yet speaking, while you are yet speaking, it will hear. He will hear. He will answer. Pray with assurance. He will answer. Even Ahab believed the words of the prophet Elijah. Go up and eat. Wipe away the tears. Wipe away the sorrow. Take away all the doubt. Take away all the palpitation of the heart. Take away all the unbelief. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Answer prayer tonight. Manifestation tonight. Fulfillment tonight. That's that's the, that's right. Coming your way. That's right. It's coming your way. In Jesus' name we pray. God has answered my prayer. God has answered my prayer. That's a manifestation in my life tonight. That's a miracle in my life tonight. Joy has come to my life. Assurance in my life. Somebody there has a miracle. Where is he? Where is she? A confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God who answers prayer. You will never disappoint any of your people. And all the people who are here tonight, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, Lord, I pray there will be a definite transformation, a definite miracle, a definite manifestation in every life here tonight in Jesus' name. Every situation in prayer, Lord, I pray, give it to them in Jesus' name. That mountain the side will move, oh Lord, we agree together. That mountain come out in Jesus' name. All that occasional perennial problem, it will come now, go, it will come now and go. Lord, I pray tonight will be the final end. Set your people free, break every yoke in their lives. And Lord, I pray you grant everyone breakthrough in Jesus' name. Bring open doors before everyone. Lord, I pray poverty to go. Joblessness to go. Barrenness to go. That famine locally there in their personal life, take the famine away in Jesus' name. Provision for every family. 
abundance for every family all the tears you wipe away and i pray lord every definite sin that have been asked of you concerning anyone here confirm each in every life in jesus name sickness will not go home with anyone sickness whatever the name sickness whatever the description sickness however long you have been there i command you come out in jesus name attack affliction oppression demonic power come out in jesus name i pray you turn their sorrow to joy wipe their tears away bring joy and laughter in every heart and i pray miracle for everyone for every single person lord miracle confirmation in jesus name abundance of rain abundance of miracle abundance of supply abundance of benefits abundance in answer to prayer confirm upon every life put a song in every mouth testimony in every mouth lord every soul here will praise the lord praise ye the lord praise ye the lord praise ye the lord your prayers are answered in jesus name